That's good. I got some people sleeping. Hey, let's stand together. Love is on the move 
when the father's in the room the prison doors fling wide and the dead come to life his love is on the move when the father's in the room as miracles take place in the cynical find faith the love is breaking through Bethlehem Community Church. Man, there's a lot of a lot of new, fresh faces that I hadn't seen, and you you might be a visitor, or you might be new, or whatever. Hey, we're glad you're here. Hey, do us one favor. There's a connection card in front of you in your in your pew. Just fill that out for us, and just drop that off. We want to get to know you. We want to send you all kinds of free stuff, and amen. No, we just want to let you know what's going on, and we just want a record of your visit. Hey, if you're joining us online, welcome. Just tell us where you're watching from. If you're watching from out of state, if you want to connect with us, just send us a message on there. Hey, I'm new. I want to be a part, I want to be a part of the online family. Um, man, just send us something. Just drop a comment. We'd love to just worship with you online as well. Woo, man. God is good. <laughs> man, we get excited for softball and our kids throwing home runs and all that stuff. We're in Jesus' house. Hey, man, come on. for revival in this place. Can we pray together? Lord Jesus, we love you. As we, as we gather together, it's a, it's a privilege to gather. God, you're already moving in this place. You're already here. Let it be much more than singing this morning. Much more than music, much more than a message. It's worship this morning. And it is so refreshing to to see a packed house. Ready to worship you, Jesus. This is second service. Whoever is watching online, streaming with the Lord, be with them as well. God, we love you. Move in this place. In Jesus' name. Everybody said.
Good morning. You may be seated. When I come up here, y'all can just sit down. That's no way I guess, right? <laughs> Thank you guys for coming this morning. Glad that you are here. If you're a visitor with us, uh, again, you can look inside that pew in front of you. There's a connection card. If you don't mind filling that out, you can leave it in your pew when we're done, or you can put it in one of the offering boxes uh, in any of our foyers, okay? Hey, if, you're, if your handwriting is grotesque like mine, okay, just do us a favor. Go to bestcc.net. There's a connection card there to fill that out. That way we're not trying to figure out who's who, right? That's easier for a lot of us anyways. You can do it on your phone nice and quick. As far as giving, if this is your first week back or maybe first couple and you slept through the other announcements, then uh, we're not going to take up tithes and offerings as we traditionally do. We have uh, offering boxes inside our foyers. And, of course, you can also go to bestcc.net and give, uh, give online as well. All right? way of announcements, I want to remind you, we are having Sunday school, okay? That's at 10 o'clock. I know this is the second service, but you guys can do it, right? We do have Sunday school. It's at 10 o'clock. Young adults are inside the Lighthouse building, which is a youth building. Our other Sunday schools are meeting jointly right now inside the fellowship hall right back here beside the kitchen, okay? And then the rest of the classes are meeting accordingly. Then uh, also remind you, Wednesday nights, uh, adults, y'all meet inside the fellowship hall, Right over here beside the kitchen, and everybody else meets inside their building. Kids and the kids, youth in the lighthouse, bridge in the bridge. Kind of makes sense, right? So, uh, so be sure to attend those if you can. Uh, you are in for a treat, as we will have a second week of baptism for this service. Last week, we baptized in the first service. This week, we'll be baptizing uh, here in the second service. We've got three at the end, so, uh, so please stick with us and help us celebrate the new life that Christ has given. Hey, church, again, thank you for coming this morning. Don't forget, be in prayer, right, for our leadership and, of course, for our, um, also for our teachers and, and faculty workers and stuff like that. I know they're, they're going through, there's really no telling, uh, they're going through all kind of, of probably wondering of, of how, to, how to teach and love kids as, they've, as God called them to do, uh, but still, you know, abide by the, these COVID procedures and keep everybody safe. So just be in prayer for them, for our admins and, and teachers and such. All right, let's pray. We're going to continue in worship. God, I thank you so much that, uh, that we're here and we can come and worship, Lord, and hear your word. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. You've been so good to us, Lord. As we sit in a room that has air conditioner and padded seats and sound equipment, and lights, etc., Lord, all those things are great comforts, but Lord, help us to realize that we don't need those things to worship you. You are enough. And you are worthy. There are people who worship your name in secret, in tunnels and caves. 
And there are people who worship your name on the biggest platforms possible. And God, I just pray that we realize it's not about us or what surrounds us, but it's all about you. Lord, fill this place with your spirit. Let us leave here changed, transformed. Let us train up our kids, the people we come encounter with every day, whether at work or in passing. God, be with Jamie as he preaches and fill him with your spirit. And it's in your name. Amen.
stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. And if that cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Because death is just a door. for a prayer to the Lord. You might be with your family this morning. You pray for them as they are here. Somebody in your family might need to come to know the Lord or just whatever's going on. Somebody might be sick. streaming online, just drop a comment or a prayer request, maybe, hey, pray for this and my family, this is what's going on. Uh, just as we continue in worship and with the message, with your word, Jesus, we love you. Be magnified in us. God, we surrender it all to you this morning. Lord, I pray you'd speak as you always do. Lord, come in and move. Anoint, anoint the word this morning. Anoint the pastor as he comes to share. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
Good morning. Good to have you here. We've got a good looking crowd uh, this morning. This service, full house. <clears throat> it was a ugly looking crowd in the first service, so <clears throat> it's, uh, appreciate you being here uh, today. Uh, we want to welcome those viewing online. Uh, appreciate you tuning in this morning. We are uh, finishing, going to finish up a series we've entitled Wake Up. Wake Up. And, and we're just kind of heeding the warning that God gives us uh, about just, uh, man, being aware and uh, waking up from our slumber and, and sleep. And, you know, uh, years ago, people look to different things and they handle problems, uh, different things. But I, I went through a period of my life where, uh, man, when things would get down, when, when I'd get stressed, uh, I, I used to um, battle that with sleeping. And, man, I'd, I'd just go to sleep. And it was my way of checking out. It was just my way of, of not having to uh, face reality and, and face the things that were going on, the stresses uh, that, that I was going through. Or, and, uh, man, I, I'd just check out. And I, I'd, I'd, go, I'd go to sleep. And sometimes I, I'd sleep for long periods of time, as much as I can, just because I, I just didn't want to face certain things. And I, I got to thinking about that. <clears throat> This morning's message, and, and sometimes we, we seem to do that as spiritually. Uh, I mean, we just don't want to face certain things, and, and man, we just kind of check out on God. <clears throat> we just check out on, on being who God's called us to be, and, and we just kind of give up, uh, really, in, in, in certain areas. It's, it's our way of not facing reality. It's, a, it's our way of, of not uh, standing up for Christ and standing up for our beliefs. We, we just choose to kind of back away uh, from those things. And so I want to address that this morning, and I want to take your attention to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and uh, I want to open up with three verses, verses 1 through 3. This is what God's Word says. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. and We thank you for this day. I thank you for the ones that are here. I thank you for the ones that are listening online. And, and Lord, I, I know that there are no mistakes. Uh, your kingdom, you have a purpose and plan for everything. I, I know very well that uh, there's a reason every individual is here today or listening online. Uh, you knew from the beginning of time who would be sitting in these pews, who would be listening online to this particular message, singing these particular songs. On this particular day. So Lord I, I pray that your will is done. Lord I know that I need you. I, I know there's no needs that I can offer. There's nothing that I can provide to help anyone listening today. But I, I do know that you can use me if you choose. And so I pray for that. That you'll use me as your vessel Lord to speak through me. I pray that you help us to be attentive. And receptive to your word. And I'll be careful to praise you. In Jesus name we ask. Amen. I'm convinced sometimes the easiest thing we can do. Is to give up. The easiest thing we can do is throw in the towel. And give up. I think it's important to, to teach our children. Not to give up. Uh, we, we seem to be in a generation that is, uh, man, used to video games and, and, and just that, that restart button. When things don't go right, when, when, when they're losing the game, man, they just hit that restart button. And, and, and sometimes that has, <clears throat> that has uh, moved into our everyday life. That when, when things don't go our way, we just we want to start over. Instead of tackle what's at hand, instead of face reality, we just want to give up. 
And that's why I, I tell parents, it's, man, it's so important whether your, your kid is in show choir, uh, choirs, uh, cheerleading, baseball, football. What, hey, if they start something, man, make them finish at least the season. At least the season. Because here's what I've learned. We don't like to do anything un unless we're good at it. Right? Could, could you testify to that? Hey, if we're not good at it, we're not going to like it. We're he hey, here's a newsflash. They ain't going to get good at it on week one. <clears throat> After the first practice or two, the, uh, the, they're not going to be real good at it. And so sometimes, man, they, they got to work at it, right? At least give them a season. And then you can reassess and decide if that's for them or not. <clears throat> but, hey, even as adults, even as adults, if we're not careful, we'll develop a standard for giving up. Man, it's easy to give up on our families. It's easy to give up on our careers. It's easy to give up on goals and aspirations in life. It's easy just to throw in the towel and give up. You know, if you study successful people, you'll learn that they all had obstacles. They all had things that, uh, man, they had to face and, and things that they had to overcome. And just in preparing for this message, I, I man, I, I found out some things or, or, or kind of revisited some things. George Washington actually lost the first five battles of the Revolutionary War. But our first president didn't quit. He didn't give up. I learned that Walt Disney, Walt Disney went bankrupt 12 times. Did you know that? 12 times. He had two complete nervous breakdowns. Disney World's one of the premier attractions in the world because he didn't give up. Elvis Presley, yeah, oh, the king of rock and roll. He once had the opportunity to sing at the Grand Ole Opry. And after he finished, the manager asked Elvis, what else do you do, son? He said, well, I drive a truck. The manager told him, well, don't quit your day job because you're never going to make it as a singer. Oh, was he wrong. <laughs> Yeah, he was wrong. Oh, Elvis didn't give up. Hey, when Clint Eastwood first tried out as an actor, he was told that he'd never make it into Hollywood because he was too stiff. He had a chipped tooth and a big Adam's apple. Oh, Clint didn't quit. Amen? He didn't give up. Hey, get this. You, you, you're gonna, you can, this is going to blow your mind. Albert Einstein. Did you know Albert Einstein couldn't even talk until he was four years old? He never could read until he was seven. He was told by many schools and by many uh, psychologists and stuff that he was mentally slow and would never achieve much in life. <laughs> Albert Einstein didn't quit. I heard about a sales manager that was trying to motivate his salesman. And he said, hey, did the Wright brothers give up? And they said, no. Did Charles Lindbergh give up? They said, no. They said, did Herman Milford give up? And they said, who? They said, Herman Milford. You never heard of him? They said, no, we never heard of him. The salesman, sales manager said, well, that's because he gave up. That's why you never heard of him. Proverbs 24, 16, it says, For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. There were some people in the Bible who got down and out. Man, but they didn't give up. Church, listen to me. Hey, if you're watching, listen to me. It's not a sin to get down. It's not a sin to get sad and down and out. To get stressed out. Hey, that's not a sin. But man, it is a sin to stay down. To stay out. You know, I, I attempted to play baseball. I played baseball in high school. You know, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't a good fielder, but I also wasn't a good hitter. And so it just wasn't a good combination <laughs> there. And, and, and so, uh, man, I can remember uh, playing baseball. And, man, uh, my family, they'd all come. And, man, I'd always have a big cheering section. that would say, Jamie, get that ball. Catch that ball. Hit that ball, Jamie. Throw them out. <clears throat> throw a home run. No, that, that's not what they said. Not throw a home run. Uh, hit, hit a home run. <laughs> hit a home run. 
And many times I, I can remember me thinking to myself, I would if I could get off this bench. Amen? <laughs> I, I wasn't that good in baseball. But hey, let me tell you what one of the greatest said. Let me tell you what one of the greatest. Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan has more recorded strikeouts by far. I mean, a couple of thousand more than anybody else. To be exact, 5,714 career strikeouts. Nolan Ryan said this. The reason I was able to strike out so many batters is because I was allowed to walk so many batters. <laughs> you see, you may not know this. Nolan Ryan holds the record for strikeouts, but he also holds the record for most walks in professional baseball. Winston Churchill, he said this. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never give in. In nothing great or small, large or petty. Never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. I remember going to Greece and studying all these civilizations, man, that, that were so great at, at one time. And, man, just seeing all the monuments and all the buildings. And, man, just at, at one time, I mean, they, they, and the reason they, were, they grew and the reason they accomplished, man, because they didn't give up. I mean, they just, kept, they just kept going and going. But eventually, a generation would come along that, that began to, to fall into complacency. In other words, instead of contributing to society, they began to just, just accept what society had already given them. And, uh, they, and it was because of that those civilizations began to crumble. Well, we're going to get down. We're going to get depressed. You mean, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get upset. But you can't ever give up, ladies and gentlemen. You can't ever give up. And I want to give you some things this morning. Just right from this passage concerning just... Man, and I've, I try to even apply them to my life. Because, man, I get down. I'm not, I'm not going to preach today like, hey, none of this applies to me. Man, it applies to me as well. And when I get to those points in my life, here's some things that I just think about. And I, you can find them here in the, the Scripture. And when you get down... I think if you'll just remind yourself of some things, it'll help you. Number one is this. Man, I, I just think about the Savior, right? Just th think about the Savior. Look at verses 2 and 3 again. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition for, from sinners. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Years ago, I can remember Sarah Grace uh, sitting in my lap and uh, in the recliner. and uh, I get teared up just thinking about that. Time has flown by. Uh, but I remember her sitting with me and we were watching Rocky. Oh, Rocky Balboa, boy. Uh, that's, uh, I raised my kids on Rocky. Uh, no, but I, I, I love the Rocky movies. And we were watching one of the, the movies, and it was, um, it, was, it was a scene after, the, uh, after Rocky's wife had died. And he was visiting the, the grave, and he's talking to her. And Sarah Grace looked up at me, and she said, Dad, uh, what, where is she at? Who's he talking to? And I said, well, he's talking to his wife. She went to be with, you know, Jesus. And, and she kind of looked a little confused, and she looked at me, and she said, Daddy, isn't Jesus with us? And I was like, actually, he is. Actually, he is. I remember a story about a, a doctor who was trying to kind of um, relax a little girl that had come in, her parents come in, uh, they were just to check up, and he had taken the stethoscope, put it on her heart, and uh, and she was just real nervous and shy. And he put it there and he said, hey, is, uh, is Goofy in there? And she just didn't say nothing. He'd wait. He'd try to he'd do some other. Then, then he'd come up. He'd say something. Hey, is Barney in there? Just trying to get her to talk and just loosen up. And, and he just he asked her several things. And finally he hit a nerve when he asked, hey, is, is Cinderella in there? 
And about that time, she perked up and she said, Hey, listen, doctor, Cinderella's on my panties, but Jesus is in my heart. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Hey, she was exactly right, ladies and gentlemen. Amen? Hey, I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for a Savior that loves us. I'm thankful for a Savior that wants to commune with us and have a personal relationship with us. Hey, no king, no nation, no philosopher, no scientist, no doctor has done more for the human race than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has done. And man, when I get down, I just think about all that Jesus has done for me. Church, when you think about all that he's done for you, you can't help to, to muster up a little bit to say, man, God, God, God deserves a little more from me. Tomorrow morning, I'll open up your heart, the surgeon said to the eight-year-old boy. You'll find Jesus there, the boy said. The surgeon continued, I'll open up your heart and I'll check the damage. The boy said, well, when you do, you'll find Jesus there. When I see the damage, I'll uh, stitch you back up and then we'll think about the next step and see what we need to do, said the surgeon. You'll find Jesus in my heart when you do that, said the little boy. Because my Sunday school teacher told me, when I accepted Jesus, he lives in my heart. The surgery took place the very next day. And after the surgery, the surgeon began to take notes on what he found. And in his mind, he just knew there was no hope. There was no cure. The little boy would die within just a matter of months. And the thought began to get to the doctor, and all of a sudden, the doctor shouted to God, Why, why, did, why did you do this to this boy? Why, why can't he get to live a life that's normal, like all of us? God spoke to the surgeon's heart and said, Hey, this boy's a part of my flock because he gave his life to me. When he's here with me, he'll have no more pain. He'll have no more suffering. He'll have comfort and peace. And one day his parents will join him. And you can join him one day if you accept me as your Savior. The next day the surgeon went to the boy's room and sat down with the parents beside the bed. And In a moment, just a few moments, the boy opened his eyes and he asked very quietly, Doctor, what would you find in there? With tears running down his eyes, the doctor said, I found Jesus in there. I found Jesus in there. Hey, when I, when I feel like giving up, I think about the Savior. But I'll tell you something else. I, I think about the saving. I think about the saving. I'm talking about the saving hand of God. Psalm 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, many times we, we, we develop this mindset that, man, God's been so good to me since I've been a Christian. No, no, no. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. If you're, if you're here today, if you're living, hey, even before you were a Christian, God's good to you. God's good. Hey, I know a lot of lost people that's had second and third and fourth chances. I know a lot of people. Lost people that walk out of the doors every week at church just putting God off, putting God off. Oh, God's, good. God's so good to them to give them chance after chance after chance after chance. We serve a, we serve a good God. We serve a saving God. Man, I, all the time I hear about non-Christians. I mean, lost people getting saved from car wrecks and, and getting saved from this and having these bad accidents and, and, and getting healed. And I'm like, God, help them understand what you're doing to them. Help them understand your mercy. Help them understand that you're trying to give them another chance to serve you and turn their life over to you. Man, God, God's been so good to us. Man, I, I, perhaps just how, how many just listening today would say, "Man, I, I, I'm, I'm doing things that I never thought I'd ever dreamed of doing." 
I'm, I'm, I'm living in a manner I, I never thought. I have the things that I never thought I'd ever have. Man, I, I grew up in a little single wide trailer. Four brothers. You take a towel on half carpet from wall to wall. And man, I, I just look back and man, I, God's so good to us then. He's, he's been so good to me. And man, if, if we just look back. And see all the things that God has done for us. Sometimes I just look around and I just notice the saving hand of God. Man, there's no heart that God can't mend. There's no pain that God can't redeem. There's no bondage that God can't break. There's no need God can't meet. There's no wound that God can't heal. There's no enemy. That God can't defeat. There's no mountain that he can't move. There's no relationship that he can't restore. And church, listen to me. There's no person he can't save. We serve an awesome, awesome God. I'll tell you the third thing. When I think about giving up. When I, when I get down, man. I, I just think about the saints. I think about the saints. Look at the beginning of verse 1. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. You know, the Bible tells us that, man, we've got saints in heaven that's just cheering us on. Just cheering us on. Hey, can, can you remember playing sport, ballet, dancing, whatever you did? You, you remember when, when you knew you had somebody cheering for you? Man, it, it did something to you, didn't it? When you knew your parents were there, when you knew you had family members, when you had somebody cheering you, man, didn't it make a difference? Man, we got, we got all of heaven cheering us on. Say, man, when we get down and, and feel like giving up and feel like losing our witness and just turning everything over to the world, and, man, we got, they, they're telling us, no, no, it's not worth it. Get back up. Get back up. Keep running. Keep giving all you can for the glory of God. Paul was chased from town to town by throw, stone-throwing mobs. He was beaten five times with a cat of nine tails. Three times he was beaten with rods. He even told, told us in his letters many times that he was cold. Many times he was hungry and, and, and naked. But listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians 4.17. It says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. That far outweighs them all. Hey, if anyone had been justified to throw in the towel, man, it was Paul. But Paul kept looking ahead as to what to come. And no matter how bad things get here, he just always was able to look beyond all that. Church, listen to me. What's the worst thing that can happen to us? What's the worst thing that's going to happen to us? That we die and go to heaven? If we're Christian anyway. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Bishop Poly, Polycarp. He had his feet tied to a horse. And a pole was stuck in front of him. And his hands were strapped to the pole. He was told by the authorities. Bishop, if you denounce Christ, you are free. But if you don't, we're going to release the horse. And rip your body to shreds. This is what Bishop Polycarp said. He said, my Lord has done me nothing but good for 86 years. I see no reason to denounce him now. And that's how the great Bishop Polycarp died. When I think about giving up, man, I just think about the Savior. I think about the saving hand of God. I think about the saints. But hey, let, let, let me tell you something else. I think about the sinners. I think about the sinners as well. Because the Bible is very clear. If, if we don't know Jesus, we go to hell. Right? If we die in our sins, we go to hell. I don't know about you, but man, I've got, I got family that doesn't know Jesus. 
I got friends that, that don't know Jesus. And man, that's one thing that keeps me getting back up, knowing that if, if they don't get reached, if they don't change, they're going to hell. You see, a sinner doesn't have conviction. They don't have anything to help them, you know, just to, to, to nudge them. You see, as Christians, when you, when you accept Jesus as your Savior and the Holy Spirit uh, fills your life, it, it convicts you of, of sin and, and, and things that you've done wrong. That's why, man, you just feel so bad when you do something you shouldn't. That's why you just can't, you, you just can't get over it. You, and I have, I have people tell me all the time, man, when... When I become a Christian, when people are, uh, get saved, can they still sin? Sure they can. But make no mistake about this, you can't ever get away with it again. Because the Holy Spirit will ride your backside every day. You'll feel, you'll feel so bad for the things that, that, that you've done. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Some people say, Pastor, wouldn't you just like to give up? Go back to your old, old lifestyle? Church, let me, let me just be honest. I've tried. Hey, I'm not perfect. I've been preaching my whole adult life. I fell for some gimmicks in my life. I've tried to chase some other things. And here's what I've realized. They'll leave you empty and miserable. Because nothing can replace what Jesus gives us. Nothing can fill the void that's only meant to be filled by the Holy Spirit of God. Nothing can replace that. I've tried it. I'm telling you. You can chase money all you want. You can chase success all you want. You can chase fame and fortune. You can chase it as much as you want. But I'm telling you, it will leave you empty. Nothing can satisfy you like Jesus can. And man, when I think about when I think about giving up, man, I just think about the sinners and how miserable they are. And if I could only get them to realize what Jesus offers is so much better than what this world offers. God, God doesn't make quitters. You say, man, uh, uh, that Christian, they've backslid. They, they've done wrong, man. They need to pay. Oh, no, no, no. Trust me, they're paying. They're paying already because they're miserable. They know they're not right. They know they, they need to change. They know they need to get things right. Oh, they're paying every day. Hebrews 12, 8, it says, If you're not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not True sons. Here's what God's saying. Don't worry about discipline my children. I'll discipline them. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know about you, but somebody ever tells me my, my, my kid goes somewhere else or whatever, and they act up, and they say, what do you want me to do? Oh, no, no, you just let them get to me. <laughs> you know, you, you, you ain't got to do nothing. I'll take care of that. I promise you. That's what God's telling oh, no. He He'll discipline us when we need it. You see, sin, sinners, lost people, man, that, sometimes that's the only excuse they need is to see us as Christians get down and stay down. Say, man, I've, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed, Pastor. You, you, don't, you don't know. I, I've, I've, just, I've prayed and prayed and nothing. this thing's just not happening. I, I, I need this to happen in my life. What, what, what do I need to do? I, I don't have all the answers, but I know this. Don't give up. You say, Pastor, I've got a spouse that just won't, won't come to church with me and I have to keep going and going and going and dragging the kids and doing it all by myself. Hey, I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I do know this. Don't give up. Giving up is not the answer. You say, I've got a wayward child and, and man, they just, they just don't seem like they're ever going to change and, and they're, they're just sucking me dry. What do I need to do? All I can tell you is don't give up. Don't give up. Jesus didn't give up on you. 
You don't give up. Don't ever give up, man. Don't ever give up. You keep getting back up. History tells us we have the best chance of winning them if we don't give up on them. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because see, here, here's, here's the truth. Hey, you, 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 you see that guy on the street begging for money every day? Hey, Jesus died for him too. Hey, that mother just, just can't get her life right. Just, just seemed to be all over the place and, and just forfeiting everything in her life. Just hey, hey, Jesus died for her too. Hey, that father that just can't lay down the bottle and can't fix things and it's just controlling at the expense of his family and his kids. Listen to me, Jesus died for him too. And as a Christian, man, we need to be signs of hope for them. When I think about giving up, man, I, I think about I think about the sinners. The ones that are struggling and miserable with their life that just don't understand all that Jesus offers. And as a Christian, I don't want to add to their confusion. I don't want to add to all the things going wrong in their life. I want them to see my life and see that there's something worth going after. Amen? As Christians, we don't want them looking at us and say, well, it ain't no better on that side. Right? Surely, surely we have something to offer. Or know, or know the one who does. Number five. Thirteen more and I'm done. Let me, let me move real quick. Hey, last one. When, when, I, when I think about giving up, when I think about throwing in the towel, number five is I think about the seat. The seat. When I say the seat, I, I'm talking about the Bema seat. The Bema seat. The English term judgment seat comes from the Greek word term Bema. If you go to Athens, Greece, the great runner's track... You'll see one seat that's raised above all the others. This seat is reserved for the one who gives the awards. Who gives the awards and the medals. You see, if we're Christians, we won't go to the great white throne judgment. We'll go to the Bema seat. It's the judgment seat of Christ. It's the Bema seat. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15 says this. His work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he'll receive his reward. If it is burned up, he'll suffer loss. He himself will be saved. But only as one escaping through the flames. You see, there's coming a day in which we'll all be awarded for what we've done here on earth. For the responsibility that we've taken to hold up the banner of Christ. You say, well, I, hey, when we get to heaven, man, it won't matter, right? Maybe so. Maybe so. But think about this. Do you know what the Bible says that we'll be doing once we get to heaven? We'll, we'll be worshiping, man. We'll be worshiping. Years ago, I, I was able to visit the Isle of Patmos. And, and man, in when, and that's, that's where John wrote the book of Revelation. And, and in chapters 3 and 4, it tells us that he saw that up in heaven where there were saints surrounding the throne of God. And, and what were they doing? They were worshiping and presenting their gifts. They were presenting their gifts to, to God. You see, the rewards we'll receive at the Bema seat. But when we receive them, listen, they won't be for us. They'll, they'll be for God. You, you, ever, you ever went to a party and man, you, you, you get there and you're all excited and you realize you're the only one that didn't bring anything? And you're like, man, I'm glad I'm at the party, but it feels a little awkward that everybody's participating except me. Hey, hey trust me. Trust me. Heaven will be enough. Heaven 
will be enough. Whenever we get there, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a, but, but church, but church, man, don't you want to know that you were responsible with the time that God gave you? And, and, and that you continue to, to get up through the power of the Holy Spirit and your love for Christ when, when things got you down. And you were able to accomplish what God wanted you to do. I know we're not perfect. I know, yes, you're going to get down. I, I've told you that. But man, you, 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 you should have something within you that keeps making you want to press forward. I, I've just come today just to encourage you, man, don't give up. I don't know where you're at, man. Man, maybe, maybe you've had some bad. Hey, we're in a bad time. Hey, we're, we're in a, a rough patch in, in our society and our world. And, and man, there are, there are times where we, I, there's times I don't know what to do. And you just like, hey, all I can say is don't give up. Don't give up. Keep pressing on. Keep running the race that God has placed before you. Listen, if you're here today, if you're listening to my voice, God is not done with you yet. God is not done with you yet. You keep pressing forward for the glory of God. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this time. and I thank you for your word and I... My prayer is like it always is. Lord, I just want your will to be done. Change. Transformation. Lord, I pray that it falls upon this place today. I pray that those watching. That in this broadcast. Until things are right with you. As we bow our heads and close our eyes, no one looking here, and perhaps you're listening and you say, uh, man, I don't know Jesus, Pastor. I'm not right. I, I, really, I really can't relate to giving up on Jesus because I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. But today's the day for me. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. Man, whether you're here or whether you're watching, you say, today is that day. I just want to, I want to lead you in a little prayer. And if you're serious about it, today's the greatest day of your life. You say, today I want to be saved. What do I need to do, Pastor? Well, I just want to give you a prayer. It just involves some things. The Bible says are necessary for salvation and you say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Whether you're listening or whether you're here, hey, you pray this to yourself. You say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose from the grave three days later to conquer death, hell, and sin. Today I commit my life to you and I accept your forgiveness for all of my wrongdoings. I also invite the power of the Holy Spirit to flood my heart to help me to be the person you want me to be. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. No one looking. No one looking. You say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. And I meant it. From the bottom of my heart, I meant it. I was serious about it. You say, Pastor, I prayed that. I wonder if I could just see your hand. You just slip it up gently. Yes, I see that hand. Just slip it up. You say, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Just slip it up so that I can see it. Hey, if you're listening online, you say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. Would you do something for me? All I ask is that you type out four words in the comment section. You type out, I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer.
prayer. If you're listening on YouTube or another platform that's not Facebook, hey, if you'll just email us at Bethlehem849 at gmail.com. should be right there on your screen. And you just email those words. You give us your name and you just say, I prayed that prayer. We'd love to contact you, help you out in any way, answer any questions that you may have. We want you to know that God loves you. And today's the greatest day of your life. And don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Hey, no one looking here in our service. You say, uh, Pastor, I prayed that. Will you look at me? Will you look at me? Will you look at me? Okay. I'm proud of you. Today's a great day in your life. Would you get up and come to me? Maybe, maybe you're here, you say, Pastor, if I'm honest, if I'm honest, man, I, I, I'm at a crossroads in my life, man. There's, there's times I feel like giving up. There, there's times I have felt like giving up. There's times I've just been close. It's just a, man, it's just a bad time. I just need courage. I need help from the Lord. Say, Pastor, that's me. I, I just need a renewal in my life. I wonder if I could see your hand. You say, that's me, Pastor. Yes, man, I see those hands. Yes, yes. Hey, we're all going to stand. We're all going to stand and we're going to sing. Listen, God's not done. God's not through with you. Do not give up. As we sing, man, just a testimony of your commitment Encourage to the Lord. If you'd like to bring that to the altar, hey, there, there's nothing magical about these steps or, or this altar. But man, the Bible tells us that whenever, whenever God's people made commitments and, and would, would go to new places, man, they would build an altar and they would give their commitments to God. And hey, maybe you just want to commit some things to Him. Maybe you've got somebody else on your heart today. Maybe you just want to stay where you're at and sing a little louder as your commitment to stay true to the Lord. Hey, however you want to use this time as we sing, I pray that you do.
Jesus. Jesus. You ever felt like giving up? I have. I have. I know we, there's little, little things that come here and there and man that get us down, but hey, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you can get so down. You can get so down. You just want it all to go away. Sometimes the burdens are too heavy. Sometimes the stress seems to be too much. Sometimes the chaos seems to be out of control, right? Hey, we serve a God, a great God, who can corral all that. Hey, as Christians, as Christians, you, you ever lost the desire, just the hunger for God? Hey, you ever struggle with, man, you just don't want to read the Bible. Hey, hey, I've been preaching my whole life, my whole adult life. Listen, I get that. 
mean, it happens. I, I'm, I'm telling you. And when it does, it doesn't mean it's the end. Hey, it's, it's because you're human. And, and you need God on a regular basis. Every day's a battle, man. And the devil wants nothing more than to, to take that desire away from you. To take that passion away from you. Listen, whatever you've lost, God can give it back. I promise you. You ever not want to go to church? There's times I don't want to preach. I'm telling you, I, I know what you're going through. But God can give it back. God can give it back to you. He can make you enjoy His presence again. He can make you love His Word. He can do that, man, I'm telling you. Had a young lady give her life to the Lord today. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe seated for a couple of moments. We're going to, uh, those getting baptized can begin to uh, come to the back and we'll get you situated. Rocky's going to sing uh, 12 or 13 songs or so while, while we get ready. I'm just kidding. Hey, it, it won't take us but a, a few moments. We'll be ready and then uh, you celebrate with us these three that have recently given their lives uh, to the Lord and we'll have some more next week praise the Lord for what he's doing in our midst let's sing rock hey this is time for celebration amen yeah I heard somebody go woo <laughs> hey if you want to sit if you want to stand you can I'm not going to tell you what to do but it's a time to celebrate amen Cause I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise The treasures I fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together is now satisfied here in
salvation, but, but it is a commandment that we are to follow in baptism after our salvation, right? And so we, uh, this is a celebration for us that we can come. And so thank you guys for, for coming this morning. We're going to start a baptism with Mr. Tristan. Come on, Tristan. <laughs> Told you, man. <laughs> All right. Tristan, who is your Lord? Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Mr. Wade Robertson, Wade Robertson. Wade, because you've made Jesus Christ your Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Samantha Mentor could not be here today, so uh, that concludes our baptismal service. If you'll stand, we will be dismissed. Thank you once again so much for being here today. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer. Uh, Keith Bryan, will you close this please?